we have a lovely track in front of us about open knowledge. And the first person that we have here is uh, Guillaume Dumas, and he's a brain scientist. And as a brain scientist, he found a uh, Hack Your PhD, where it's about uh, knowledge as a uh, commons that is ubiquitous, and uh, that a PhD can be done different than we know up to now. So please, the stage is yours. So thank you very much. It's uh, an honor to be here. Uh, I must uh, precise that uh, I'm co-founder of Hack Your PhD because uh, the other co-founder is Celia, who is there. And uh, the basic idea of our community was about uh, bringing the value of open science and the idea of knowledge as a common good into the community and try to change mentalities towards that. So I have, I'm very honored to in, uh, introduce this session. Uh, Aurenio asked me to talk about knowledge as an ubiquitous common. Uh, I won't speak too much about like Wikipedia and all the stuff that er everybody knows. Uh, I want more to dig into uh, issues like, uh, oh damn. Okay, so basically, for instance, the notion of knowledge and put it in perspective towards like the society of information. Now we are talking about knowledge society or even uh, knowledge economy and put it also a side of wisdom and how it can also be associated with values and more like a, a wise perspective on the use of these uh, tools. And so for that, I want to put in perspective these different aspects and different engagement in values uh, towards like knowledge as a common good. Uh, I can take the open source movement as a good example of how different people bring different flavors to the use of open source. So for instance, here on the left, you have uh, Bob Young who creates Red Hat. And on the right, on far right, you have uh, Richard Stallman. And in the middle, Linus Torvald. And these three guys worked on uh, basically the same uh, tools, which is open source software, but with different uh, values and different way at the business model level, for instance, uh, to deal with these tools. So for instance, Bob Young found Red, Red Hat and uh, build a successful community uh, and a successful uh, entrepreneurship based on uh, Linux distribution. And Richard Stallman was more like talking about the values of free software, like free as in freedom and not as in free beer. And um, yeah, so this brings like a lot of community around the concept of open source, but it's not because they are sharing the word open source that they are sharing the same values. And in the case of open science, we can try to uh, see knowledge uh, around different topics, different tools, different practices, different values. For instance, like the, the core of uh, knowledge as uh, education and sharing of the knowledge and learning and teaching, but also the collaboration and sharing of knowledge within uh, the scientific community. And finally, the introduction of uh, digital practices to facilitate all these tools. And so like we can go from the open source to the open course and see how we can design and collaborate towards like building uh, a common uh, knowledge. So when we talk also about this uh, knowledge as a common good, we have to have a free circulation of this knowledge. And uh, in that, uh, the open access movement is also a very uh, interesting aspect because in a decade, we have a very dramatic shift in the publishing uh, industry, whereas uh, before you had like very uh, centralized actors like Elsevier, for instance, that were taking money from the scientists on one side and from the university on the other side to allow knowledge to travel. Now we have like uh, people like Plus One, for instance, Public Library of Science, uh, who have built up also a business model to sustain the ability to have a, uh, an open access to this knowledge. Then there is also the aspect of the data. So the, the people are talking a lot about big data, but there is uh, on top of that, the need of opening the data. And in that way, uh, it's not a, a question of only uh, in the scientific uh, community, it's more about having data available to a low reproducibility because there are a lot of problems with reproducibility in research. But also it's a, it's a way of giving access to data sets to uh, other scientists so they can make meta-analysis and build up 
on the knowledge of others, but also for uh, the citizens in general. So like the scientists are gathering uh, a lot of data and until now they gather that on their uh, hard drive in their labs. Now we are entering a world where any uh, citizen scientists can collaborate and take this data from a research center and so on to do their own subjects. And in, at the contrary, also having citizens, uh, c uh, citizen scientists creating a lot of data that can be explored by scientists as well. And finally, so speaking about citizens, we have also uh, citizen science. And oh, now with the opening up of knowledge and seeing knowledge as a ubiquitous common, we have like citizens that are involved in the process of creating knowledge, uh, validating knowledge. We have like, for instance, the um, Center for Open Science in Charlottesville who recently uh, made a, a huge project of reproducibility research thanks to a, a lot of collaborators around the world showing that, for instance, on 100 psychological experiments, only 39 was reproducible. So it shows you how we can have a power of uh, feedback from the community also to control the reproducibility of research and how rigorous it can be. Hmm. I think there we need more battery on that one. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're spoiled already. Uh, so, and finally, we can see also the knowledge uh, as a, also something at the core of democracy. And for instance, uh, in Iceland, they have already uh, started to put the citizen into the creation of their own constitution. And so that's a, a, a good leverage for uh, how we can empower citizen also in the production, not only on the uh, factual knowledge, but also knowledge that can be useful for the, uh, the running of the society itself. So you have seen there is a lot of uh, open words there. Uh, but so, oh, my goodness. Okay, yeah, I will try to go. Ah, this thing is random. I don't know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I, speak, I spoke a lot about open word, but uh, we have to be careful also with that. So there is like a lot of uh, open washing and uh, in the same way that in the past uh, about ecology, people were talking about greenwashing and we have to take care about that. Like for instance, in open access, we have predatory publisher that take the open access movement as a sc for scamming scientists. We have also with the uh, apparition of uh, new uh, decentralized uh, citizen scientists, a kind of uh, precariousness that is uh, taking over on the lack of permanent position in research. We have also difference between discourse and practice. For instance, putting a bunch of Excel file on an FTP server is not the same as open data. You need also to provide metadata and take the, the, the way that people can use it. And finally, about uh, open education, Basically, there is a, a big failure about MOOCs, where like uh, most of the people who use MOOCs are already people with uh, advanced education, and people in a developing country are not necessarily having access to internet and so on. So we have to take care about uh, really uh, being be, uh, staying re realistic about all these uh, issues. There is also a big issue, which is the business model. So uh, which kind of business model would be the most uh, adapted to uh, seeing knowledge as a common good. And uh, for instance, you can have volunteering, crowdfunding, donation, philanthropy, and also building a product, which is the one uh, that is corresponding the most with the value you want to create in the society and so on. This is a very open question right now. And uh, there are a lot of people uh, ranging from uh, the Bob Young posture to the Richard Stallman posture, and uh, we have to to discuss, and I think it's a very core pro, uh, issue for the future, to establish a map of different uh, business models. And uh, I hope we, we will have the occasion to discuss about that. And finally, to uh, also how to empower community and see the, the knowledge as a, a way, an entry point, to bring uh, more equity in and not centralized control of this knowledge. So in the way that uh, there is like different challenge uh, heading up, uh, in front of us uh, from different perspectives, so the macro perspective with the policymaker, and uh, I hope to hear more about this at the mesoscopic level and also at the microscopic level, 
for each individual, how to empower people and give them uh, a sense of what this knowledge means for them. And so instead of imposing a top-down regulation of the knowledge uh, to have a bottom-up uh, vision of how the community can bring actually new knowledge. And finally, uh, if this thing allow me to do that, uh, I, I was speaking at the beginning how to go from data and uh, information to knowledge and wisdom. And so there are different transitions occurring right now for doing a more purposeful use of knowledge. So in the knowledge, there is like the subject and the, the, the people. And in the wisdom, there is also the, the care of others. And so like we have a shift from financial profit to social values. We have different shifts from uh, communities that are sharing the purpose and not instead of having one person sh uh, taking advantage of a, a community, like for instance in academia, uh, towards more like a decentralized project where everyone is empowered to, towards the same goal. And so it goes with the move from competition to a more cooperation, of course, which is a kind of a problem. And uh, from property, property uh, perspective to an open source perspective, but as I show with uh, Richard Stallman and uh, Bob Young, it doesn't mean that uh, open source is also uh, with value or not. It's, it's up to you also. So thank you.